Good morning. This is Lidi van der Berg. And it's been a while that I uh, wrote a short uh, message. Um, and today I entitled my few thoughts, I entitled them Rest in God. We are well into the year 2024 and the holidays, uh, if you had any, seem like a distant memory. The rest you were able to take seems like a dream. It came and went so quickly. And you wonder, did I actually take a break? The Bible talks about rest. And it is different from what we think resting means. A poem by A.B. Simpson illustrates resting in God. Once my hands were always trying, trying hard to do my best. Now my heart is sweetly trusting and my soul is all at rest. Once my life was full of effort, now it's full of joy and zest. Since I took his yoke upon me, Jesus gives to me his rest. Listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew 11, where he says, Come to me, all you, are, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That is Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30. Jesus knows all about the things that you are worried about. He knows your past, your present and your future. He knows where you are hurting. He knows your questions and he knows how you struggle with sin. And he offers inner peace, a soul at rest in the midst of your hectic life. He invites you with open arms and when you accept his invitation, you will find the rest he talks about. It is a rest that is way more than finding rest after, f after feeling physically exhausted. Psalm 62 verse 1 says, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. The rest is not found in doing A, B and C, but it is found in your relationship with Jesus. Jesus speaks about taking his yoke up on us, and that yoke is a symbol of discipleship. Carrying the weight of the world upon your shoulders is too much to bear. No one can do that. But if we put our trust completely in Jesus, we carry his yoke, and that yoke is easy because he himself gives us the strength we need. And at Willow's Kids, we are learning the verse from Philippians 4.13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. There once was a man named John Payton who was translating the Bible for a South Seas Island tribe. John Payton discovered that the natives had no word for trust or faith. One day a native who had been working hard came into the missionary's house flopped himself into a large comfortable chair and said, it's good to rest my whole weight on this chair. And this became a revelation to Peyton. That's it, he said. I'll translate faith as resting one's whole weight on God. Joyce Meyer wrote a message entitled Living in God's Rest. And in it, she refers to Hebrews 4 verses 9 and 10 where it says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. This is what she says about the rest mentioned in these verses. Now, the rest of God is not a rest from work. It's a rest in work. It's partnering with God to do what he is calling you to do, by his grace, and leaving the part you can't do in his hands, trusting him to do it. Hebrews 4 verse 3 says it this way, For we who have believed enter that rest. So we start by believing. Now obviously there's a great difference between trying and trusting. You can try to believe, but this will not give you that inner peace. Only by trusting God, you step into that space where you actually 
rest in him. And trusting has to do everything with our attitude. You cannot change the world and all the things that happen around you. You cannot change your personal circumstances, but you can change your attitude towards them. In our life, we partner with God. We do our part and he does his part. Only when we trust him and obey, meaning doing what he wants us to do, we experience that peace that passes all understanding. The stress and the anxiety appear when we try to do God's, God's part. You start to worry about all the possible ways things could go wrong. You imagine how this will affect you and you make a plan to get yourself out of the situation. In other words, you do not trust God to do his part. How are we able to do our part and leave God to do the rest? Well, in his strength, as I mentioned earlier, and by his grace. The faith we have received has been a gift of God's grace. Nothing we did made us earn that grace. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. Salvation has been a gift of grace from God, and so is the living out of our faith. God enables us to do that by his grace. And Joyce Meyer puts it like this. It's so amazing to know that God is always with us, giving us his grace for everything we need to do in life. Trust God's unconditional love for you today. Do what you can do and give him everything else. And when you find yourself getting frustrated or feeling overwhelmed, like you just can't do it anymore, Remember to stop, get your focus back on him and enter into his rest once again. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the faith that you have given us, that we can know that you're right beside us. Thank you for the part we can play into your plan and that every day, by grace, we can live out our faith. You strengthen us, Lord, also for today. Help us to continually to trust you, to put our faith in you on a daily basis so that we will find that rest and live in that rest and stay in that rest that you offer. We thank you, Lord. Thank you that we may know you. We thank you for this day and we ask your blessing and all that you give us to do. In Jesus' name, amen.